and we titled the book Meaningful Differences in the Everyday Experience of Young American Children. We started observing in the homes when the children were seven months old. And we were taking a little bit of data, but it was just mostly to get the process and everybody comfortable with this. We tried to seriously start taking data on by nine months old. Every month, different times of the day and evening and weekends and so on, uh, to get some estimate of what was actually going on in the home. We got a full range from welfare all the way to professionals and everything in between in terms of SES. Um, and we stratified also for uh, Caucasian and African American. It wasn't until we began to count it up we could see over time that a given family on the average consistently talked more and another family consistently talked very little, even though each, there was variability in each one. The other thing is that parents talked a lot to their babies, talked a lot to their toddlers. And parents who talked very little to their babies talked very little to their toddlers. That The amount of talking was not had, didn't have much to do with the child side of the dance, that it was something about the family culture. Business is to get something done. Hold out your arms, stand there, stop, get down from there, come here, who gave you that? What are, you know, who, you know, in other words, it's, it's talking to accomplish something. Okay. And it turns out that the amount of business talk was a constant, no matter how much the family talked. In other words, if they talked a little, there was a certain amount, that same amount of, if they talked a lot, there was only that same, they didn't do more business talk when they talked more. The topics were different. It was about something else. So that if, if the parents only talked a little, it was all business talk. If they talked more, they didn't talk more business talk, they talked more chit chat and gossip and commentary and so on, where all the richness that we study is there automatically. Taciturn family is about, you would be 500 words an hour addressed to the child. The lowest was 150 words, but you know, sort of down into, that's a low range, you know, in that area. The average is around 1,200 words an hour, hour after hour addressed to the child. The profession, people who make their money with their mouth, they're living with their mouth, are talk, you know, doctors and lawyers and people we know, are 21, 2,200 words an hour. The highest is 3,600 words an hour. Can you imagine 3,600 words an hour addressed to a child, hour after hour, all the waking hours of the child's life. I mean, those differences are just huge. And then you add them up. And you end up with, you know, differences in the, in the na neighborhood of like 50 million words. By the time the child's four, you extrapolate them over the waking hours. 50 million words a child will have heard, or 25 million words on the average, or 30 million words on the average, or 15 or 12 or 13 million words. In other words, the differences in the, in the by the time the child is four and into preschool, into kinds of, that we begin to pick up our seriousness about organized programs and so on for them, their language differences, experience differences are just so vast. The relationship between that, that, that what we saw parents doing of non-business talk when the children are one and two years old, okay, correlates 0.78 with their Stanford Binet IQ test scores at age three, 36.78, okay. We, f okay, we, uh, we have to kind of remember, then we eliminate the relationship of the welfare, the us and them. We eliminate the 
professional, you know, doctors and lawyers and such, and we eliminate the welfare, and we just get middle America, white collar and blue collar, you know, jobs and so on, and working class. Say, okay, is the what's the relationship between the extra talk and the child's IQ scores for just that middle America? 0.77. Okay, we follow the kids into the third grade. Okay, uh, the relationships are so strong, uh, you know, in terms of outcome, and that's that's the other discovery. How strong the talkativeness, especially when you sub, you know, you cut out the business talk, the chit chat, the commentaries, the with um, child intellectual outcome is, you know, as, as strong as the data will, the the, the measures will allow. It's that notion of, of, of language and words and vocabulary size that is, you know, big in terms of cognitive implications. But it's also the other th effect. What we said was, extra words are feel good. They're not business. They're, they have affirmations in them. They have active listening. They have restatements of the child's. They are responsive turns. And so, if we think about it in terms of the emotional life of the child, if we hit, if a child is in a taciturn family, they are apt to hear prohibitions that they're wrong more often than they're right from their parents. Not and and in a very talkative family, their family might they might hear they're wrong that often, but they'll hear that they're right five or six more times more often. They're still hearing that they're wrong. From that's right. Instrumental on that, all sides. That, that's right. But they're now having this positive counterbalance. That's right. Exactly. And I think about a lifetime battery average of that. You know, sort of like in terms of of uh, you know, uh, you've heard seven hundred and fifty thousand times you're right by the time you're you're four, and you've heard a hundred and twenty thousand times you're wrong. Versus heard it hearing 250,000 times you're wrong and 120,000 times you're right. Those are lifetime. You can't overcome those with positive experience. When we began to look at outcome in terms of child vocabulary size, it wasn't SES, it was talkativeness. So we could sort it out. In other words, the, the relationship between amount of talking and child vocabulary size, child IQ test scores, and so on, was so was large, and there wasn't anything left over once you took that out. Once you turn them out of talking, there was no SES or race left, differences left after, after amount of talking. And so we think we got at what's in socioeconomic, that the relationship between poverty or socioeconomic status and child achievement.